Direi di cominciare. Io abbastanza maleducatamente dovrò andare via purtroppo per un altro impegno quasi subito, ma ci tenevo particolarmente ad esserci oggi perché oggi inizia un, un ciclo che è un ciclo abbastanza particolare, ma anzi del tutto particolare, che ci deriva anche dal, da, da un'ottima collaborazione che abbiamo avuto con la Fondazione Stock, una fondazione che si occupa anche di architettura, di arti, di, e, 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 con la quale, par a partire dal, dal, dal Presidente, che forse sarà qua in una delle prossime occasioni, il Dottor Cos, abbiamo eh, intrapreso un percorso comune. Loro fanno iniziative eh, nell'ambito appunto della promozione della cultura, delle arti, dell'architettura, eccetera, eccetera, da molto, da molto tempo. Sulla base di questo assieme, devo dire, al professor Bocchi e Antonio Romano, che è stato con noi in questa, in questa fase, abbiamo provato a mettere assieme un, un programma credibile appunto di conferenze. Su questo devo, dire, devo dare adito a, a Renato Bocchi della, della curatela, cioè del fatto che è riuscito a interpretare il, eh, la, il tema, l'occasione, in modo che non fosse semplicemente una successione di conferenze, seppure ad alto livello, che indubbiamente sono conferenze ad alto livello, un'occasione per gli studenti e per gli architetti, e, e, ma che diventasse anche invece una, una, un modo per occuparsi di alcuni temi. Il tema che è stato scelto, come avrete visto, avrete letto dalle locandine, è quello dello spazio, che di per sé per l'architettura vuol dire tutto e nulla, perché ovviamente l'architettura si occupa di spazio, è spazio e crea spazio, ma molto frequentemente, specialmente anche nelle aule università, il fatto di occuparsi di cose di, spesso anche di macro scala, di grandi spazi, porta a non considerare invece i rapporti più, più intimi, più diretti, eh, variegati fra la costruzione architettonica e la spazialità interna ed esterna che crea. Allora il programma che eh, eh, Renato sostanzialmente ha costruito è un programma che declina il tema dello spazio in rapporto ad altre questioni, tempo, eccetera, eccetera, appunto cercando di offrire una chiave interpretativa del percorso di architetti che sono molto diversi tra loro, sicuramente molto diversi tra loro, ma che sono però comunati anche da una particolare attenzione alle modalità con cui, attraverso cui l'opera architettonica appunto declina non solo il proprio spazio interiore, ma in qualche modo interviene in spazialità più o meno ampie che stanno attorno a sé. È un tema, potremmo dire, che è legato alla, alla capacità di riverberare valore, in modo che il valore non sia solo un valore estetico e formale di una singola architettura, che ovviamente è importante, ma che sia un valore che in qualche modo ha a che vedere anche con la condivisione degli spazi che vengono creati dall'architettura all'interno di se stessa e attorno a sé. Quindi è un tema importante sul quale una serie di architetti importanti sono stati chiamati. Oggi iniziamo con Guillermo e Via Garcia, che potremmo dire anche se è l'unico in realtà di tutta la serie che non ci ha mai, credo più o meno, che non è mai direttamente venuto, non ha mai partecipato per esempio ai nostri, ai nostri wave, gli altri più o meno credo avessero partecipato tutti, direi, eh, appartiene però anche a una famiglia di architetti che è sempre stata molto vicina a questa scuola, eh, a partire da una culla, diciamo così, da un, da, un, eh, da un terreno di cultura molto importante come il Cile come paese, da una parte per l'architettura e in modo particolare poi l'Università Cattolica di Santiago del Cile che è in, un luogo in cui molti dei nostri amici architetti sono cresciuti pensate a Ravena, a Radic, a Razaval, eccetera che continuano a clozza a frequentare questa scuola e di cui appunto Guillermo è parte, eh, essendo parte anche accademica della scuola, oltre che essere un, un giovane e eh, eh, bravo professionista in un momento, come tutti sappiamo, anche un po' difficile in questo momento per il Cile e eh, quindi anche per la posizione e per il lavoro degli architetti. Ma al di là di questo, eh, credo che l'occasione per gli studenti è un'occasione da non perdere, eh, ci sarà un ciclo che terminerà con la, credo, con la conferenza eh, di Barozzi e Vega, eh, che 
esprime anche in qualche modo un po' un ritorno rispetto a un architetto che si è formato in modo particolare in questa scuola e appunto il tema che vi dicevo verrà declinato attraverso una serie di punti di vista molto diversi ma legati da un'idea un po' comune che è l'idea che anche questa scuola, su cui anche questa scuola cerca in modalità diverse di connotare un po' la formazione degli architetti, appunto perché l'architettura non sia solo un oggetto ma l'architettura sia qualcosa che eh, riverbera un valore ma un valore condiviso e in qualche modo accettato e eh, riconosciuto da chi deve usare l'architettura. Non dirò altro, passo la parola alla Presidente Anna Buzzacchi dell'Ordine degli Architetti di Venezia e non solo, del Veneto anche, sì. Eh beh, non, se, non si ricordava, ma anche, anche del Veneto, che eh, come, come in moltissime altre occasioni appunto, già ha collaborato fattivamente a questa serie di conferenze. Anna, prego. Io ringrazio soprattutto l'Università e la Fondazione che ci danno questa occasione per questa formula di conversazioni sull'architettura, che è una formula, credo, estremamente interessante eh, per eh, i colleghi. Il tema dello spazio è il tema che abbiamo scelto anche come ordine al centro della nostra comunicazione, La comunica le iniziative di comunicazione che negli ultimi tempi dopo il congresso nazionale abbiamo organizzato anche nel Veneto e nella nostra città metropolitana sono legate alla costruzione eh, della domanda di architettura di qualità e quindi abbiamo messo in campo una serie di iniziative per coinvolgere i cittadini e il tema per coinvolgere i cittadini sull'importanza, sulla costruire nei cittadini la consapevolezza dell'importanza di una buona architettura è proprio il tema dello spazio, lo spazio della città, lo spazio interno ma lo spazio della città. Eh, quindi io credo che eh, offrire questo occasione di riflessione ai colleghi si inserisca in questo tema, in questo lavoro che stiamo cercando di fare, nel quale anche come ordine vorremmo coinvolgere non solo l'università, ma eh, i, i cittadini e soprattutto gli architetti perché ci aiutino in questa diffusione di consapevolezza. Abbiamo organizzato l'anno scorso la Bienna, alla Biennale nel Padiglione Venezia una colpa agli architetti intitolata da spazio al luogo per il riuso anche di piccoli spazi, per la costruzione di spazi di relazione perché siamo convinti che anche il discorso sulla città e sui nostri territori debba partire proprio dalla costruzione di spazi di relazione, di luoghi di relazione. Rimettere al centro le relazioni umane e l'uomo credo che ci aiuti a costruire eh, nella città, ma eh, stiamo facendo un lavoro anche nelle scuole, la consapevolezza che abbiamo bisogno di uno spazio di qualità e che l'architettura e la cura dell'architettura è l'elemento fondamentale per la creazione di spazi di qualità. Su questo tema siamo molto impegnati a partire dall'ordine nazionale e anche nel, nelle singole realtà locali abbiamo lanciato un mese fa e vorremmo riprenderlo l'anno venturo eh, con, con la partnership anche dell'università e di altri soggetti un festival dell'architettura il titolo del festival e della proposta è architettura bene comune quindi partiamo dagli spazi e costruiamo questa, questo dialogo con il territorio e con i cittadini quindi credo di non dover altro per eh, ringraziare ulteriormente. No, Un'ultima cosa, ho notato quanto giovane è il nostro interlocutore oggi e questo mi fa molto piacere perché io credo che soprattutto i colleghi giovani debbano aiutarmi a portare avanti questo tipo di comunicazione nel nostro territorio. Grazie e buon lavoro. Parole velocissime.
per, eh, non, non, è già stato detto tutto eh, la, la finalità, volevo solo ricordare appunto questa, partendo dal discorso appena concluso che è un po' casualmente ma non, solo, non del tutto casualmente ho voluto cominciare e finire il, il ciclo di conferenze con due giovani appunto in questo caso Guillermo veramente giovanissimo 32 anni ha già una carriera incredibilmente prolifica eh, e attualmente sta lavorando alla Columbia University a New York eh, però ha uno studio attivissimo con la moglie eh, a Santiago del Cile dove speriamo tutti che eh, la, le, la situazione politica e, e sociale si tranquillizzi e, e appunto ha prodotto in questi anni una serie di, eh, di lavori sia professionali che eh, sperimentali anche lavorando presso la Cattolica del Cile, che mi parevano veramente molto interessanti, io non lo conoscevo nemmeno io, eh, l'ho pescato attraverso il lavoro che ho trovato in internet eh, su de dei suoi lavori e poi ho scoperto che, era, che, che lavorava con gli amici cileni che ha già ricordato il Rettore, e, e mi pareva estremamente interessante proprio per il tema che avevamo scelto che è poi il tema eh, che i miei studenti stanno seguendo anche nel mio corso di teoria dell'architettura che è dedicato appunto a questo tema nei rapporti tra arte e architettura e mi pareva un, un ottimo contributo quello che poteva darci e sentiremo ora da, dalle sue parole eh, che saranno in inglese eh, perché potrebbero essere ovviamente anche in spagnolo però abbiamo deciso poi alla fine che fosse era meglio in inglese ma poi eventualmente possiamo utilizzarle eh, le varie lingue eh, per avere anche un dibattito poi eventualmente con lui e quindi mi limito a questo ri ricordo appunto che tra i tanti premi che nella pur brevissima carriera eh, Guillermo ha, ha ottenuto c'è anche questa, questa prestigiosa eh, designazione tra i migliori cento architetti del mondo eh, giovani eh, che era stato fatto da un dal El Mercurio di, di, di Cile eh, in cui avevano selezionato appunto eh, questi, questi nuovi talenti diciamo dell'architettura quindi mi pareva il modo giusto per iniziare questi nostri anche di buon auspicio questi nostri lavori grazie Well, thank you very much to, to Renato Bocchi and the Universidad UAP di Venezia and to the ESTO Foundation for this invitation. For me, it's a great honor to be here with you today. Um, I call this conference Every Design Conceals an Order, um, and it's structured through, um, I'm going to start with a sort of manifesto that I have been working on and with three sort of families of projects that you're going to, to see and hope uh, you can ask me questions or we can have a, a debate after. Um, I call this manifesto, each project is a dual process. On one shore, there, are subject, there is a subjective collection that is constantly under construction and revision. This collection consists of personal interests, obsessions, research, works of art, film fragments, literature, objects, photographs, paintings, or memories, personal and mainly donated by others. This imaginary is the substrate from where every project starts, which allows to establish relationships between them and ultimately respond to a personal cultural construction. On the other shore, there is an interest in architecture meant to be built in that way with vocation of reality, 
I am not interested in making projects that remain deliberately in that state. On the contrary, I want to move away from the instrumentalization of architecture and more specifically from the idea of the project as a mer and built manifesto. My manifesto is to bring to reality my imaginary, execute projects in a good way and build with quality. My process as an architect is the transl... Perfecto. <laughs> <laughs> My process as architect is a translation from the shore of the imaginary to the shore of reality in order to build works full of content. I found in this collection a fertile soil that allows me to perform a subjective but culturally charged architecture. This transfer or translation is done with proper tools of architecture. Representation for me plays a, key, a fundamental role in the materialization of this collection and it's the first reflection that I understand architecture as a constructed reality. I operate with planimetric drawings, axonometries, exploded systems, scale models, construction processes, and real size prototypes. The multiplicity of scales and tools are the instrument that allows us to navigate between one shore and the other without wrecking. This is the first family of projects. I call it uh, miscellaneous experiments and are a series of unconnected projects. They, um, they are diff very different programs. I will show you a school, a collective housing project, um, an offices that are understood as living bunkers, and a political pavilion. Uh, three of them are the result of architecture competitions, which I find very important uh, as a way to, to develop uh, and, and speculate with architecture. Um, these projects um, have helped me um, to set up a sort of manifesto um, and some of them can be tagged also as pre-manifesto works. The school I will show you was the first project I worked on uh, after I graduated from, from university. And the value I see on them is that they have helped me to set up my architecture studio, which is uh, something really hard to, to do. Um, and well, as I told you, the, the school was the first project I work on. The collective housing was a competition uh, I won, uh, and, and it was a way to change the scale of the projects I have developed. And at the same time, I thought it was important to enter into, into a sort of discussion about housing um, that happened in Chile after Alejandro Aravena won the project uh, that brought like the discussion on collective housing a lot, and I, I, I thought that that it's very easy to criticize someone through a Twitter, through a Twitter, but it's, I think it's more difficult to do it with a project, so, so that was a way to, to get into the discussion. Then the living bunkers uh, are the translation of architecture concepts and typologies to a conventional project. And finally, the inverted dome was a pavilion as a sort of political warning uh, about the sustainability of our oceans. This is the first project. Um, Renato told me that some uh, visual art students might be here, so uh, the, this first slide of each project might be interesting for, for you. Uh, they show some of, the, of these imaginaries I told you. So, so in this project, um, I was very interested in seeing some leisure spaces by Aldo van Eyck, for example, or the way uh, Christo and Jean-Claude work, uh, start from, from drawing, wrapping objects, and then wrapping buildings. Um, some principles or and notions of order and composition done by Joseph Albers uh, or constructions very related to engineering, since construction for me is, is very important. The project was the renovation of an existing school um, and we saw it as an opportunity to, to modernize the infrastructure and give a new face to the school. Um, the existing school was a group of pavilions. Um, it had like um, pitched roofs and their most and, uh, outstanding features were uh, a sort of different uh, patios that were interconnected between them. The high ceiling, where, which was something not very useful, uh, um, something very common in Chile, and the size of the overhanging eaves. So as, as you can imagine, the project was just the wrapping of, of these elements. Um, the commission initially was only to change the roofs due a change on the, on the sort of health regulations because they were on a material called asbesto cemento, which was uh, forbidden in educational buildings. Uh, so the decision, the decision to wrap them um, was, was like our main, our main um, operation. Um, we organized the project into three different scales that this axonometry in some way reflect. 
the first scale of action was on the patios and the pavements. Uh, the second operation was the wrapping of the pavilions and adding different skylights to them in order to bring natural light to the classrooms. And uh, the, thir the third scale was proposing a series of elements uh, more on a human scale because as, as you can imagine this, this large scale is uh, like on the building scale, but then we add uh, some entrances to the classes, some lattices to, to, to protect the windows, and finally introducing uh, a, small, a small pavilion. Um, the first scale seeks to <coughs> reorder the school around the four existing patios. Um, uh, I thought, we thought that the patios were like a fundamental moment uh, on the project since uh, when you're a school, probably you forget uh, about like the, the courses and, 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 and teachers and everything, but, but what remained was the experience uh, of being there and sharing with probably uh, persons that will, last, that will be your friends forever. So, so the patios for us were, were a key element into the design. And, and we thought them as, if, um, as like four different, four, four different elements. The first one were related to the first cycle, uh, the, the smaller kids. Um, with with some 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 um, like games on it. Then we have the, the, the sport course to the second cycle, a place for for having conversation in the third one, and an open plaza for more civic um, civic acts uh, in the fourth patio. Um, these are uh, some images of of this uh, of, of of this proposal. It was uh, like a very low low budget. Um, a very low budget project, and um, and we managed to 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 keep on like the like the trees and, and just add different elements and and these these sort of uh, seatings around them were some of the small operations we were able to make. The second scale uh, was, uh, as I told you, to the pavilions as such. Um, the operation was to add these metal wrappings that were continuous, so so you kind of change the the volume, um, and then we we add these these sort of skylights that were meant to to have natural light, and then to give like a new a new sort of image to the project. Um, I for me this image is really important. Is the wrapping of the Snoopy house done by Christian Jean Claude? Uh, so. I don't know if you if you know this this cartoon, but um, if you know it, you will see that uh, even after the wrapping, you are still able to see like the history or, or or which construction is being wrapped. So that was in some way like the like the goal we had with this project. Um, so uh, at, after adding this, this this sort of wrapping, we were able to change the project very radically, adding like this new image to it. But you still, or the persons that that knew and are students of the school, are able to see like this existing structure behind this this new element. Um, the the third scale invo involved the elements related to the human body. So. So are represented in this part, like with the, with these new accesses and the lattice works uh, upon the windows. Um, so they and, and and they were the um, like the the way to add some color and, and add some differences uh, upon each each one of the of the classrooms. Um, since the project needed to be constructed over the summer where the students are in at class, we employed the strategy to, to use a standardized constructive elements uh, with easy setup systems to produce like a whole greater instead of, uh, of, of just focusing on the, on the, on the parts. Uh, you're going to see like lots of these, um, these uh, axonometries. Uh, I mainly work using one only one section, with, which is a way that 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 has helped me in the, in the studio to to sort of develop the projects. The new construction uh, was a psychomotricity pavilion where the children can take part in games and activities in an interior space. Uh, so the, the imaginary uh, we use in this project is very related to engineering, for example, uh, and naked naked structures, bridges. So, so in some way, it's related to, to a sort of habitable beam, as you can see it in this bridge here. The pavilion is defined by its structure and easy to assemble habitable bridge beam uh, with a special emphasis on the joints and the metallic elements. Those were like the, the only few parts that we were able to work on. <clears throat> and in, in this image, you can see here 
uh, how was the old school, and then here it starts the, the renovation. The interior is configured by a wooden wrapping that generates this sort of novel atmosphere, and it's accompanied along uh, with this uh, seating that goes from one side to the other, and then we add some doors here that, that are hiding all the elements that the children use to, to play. So here you have like, the, like this atmosphere, and then again this idea of repeating only one section to, to, to complete the whole project. This, second, uh, this is the second project. It's called The Grid and the Archipelago. It was a public competition I won in 2016. And it was, like uh, I told you, was the way to enter in, into a different scale and also to, to become part of a discussion. Um, firstly, we, we do not want uh, in this project to propose a finished solution since uh, when you propose a specific uh, project, sometimes it, it's, it limits the design to certain conditions that uh, afterwards when a plot, for example, or the site changes, you are, you are unable to, to, to translate that project to a, different, to a different context, for example. So we propose a sort of an open system that can grow and form into different kinds of groups, adapting to a range of situations, different contexts, cities, orientations, scales. So for me, it was, was very important this field works done by the Chilean architect Guillermo Julian, who works with, with Le Corbusier, and I, I believe he, he worked on the Venice Hospital project after his death. And, or for example, the idea of the mat buildings, um, of the mat buildings, for example, this one is uh, Hermann Herzberger, central Bihir of his building, which is a, a key example from, from this idea. <coughs> The design proposes a rule or mode of operation, a system of order and structure, uh, just for example as the pre-Columbian complex of Tulor, the Roman city or the Spanish-American colonial city, suggest different ways of confronting and relating to the territory. They are like more abstract orders that have a physical form rather than, than, than very specific. Uh, the project as a whole is structured in function of solids, which are the buildings, and the voids, which are the plazas, in equal proportions, ensuring that half of the space will always remain empty with fixed measures and proportions. So these examples by O.M. Ungers or Louis Kahn Sadler House were, were very inspiring for developing the project. The proportions ensure open spaces and instances between uh, the 12 by 12 meter buildings, uh, so it was like a sort of suitable radio and that exist in certain points and neighborhoods of the city that I find more interesting. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you see this image very well. Uh, the, the first floor is, is open, um, so the, the, the thing that, that we do here is to, to provide a support for, for commercial uses, services, playgrounds, uh, different uh, communal spaces that are located within this grid. Um, it's a sort of grid of public spaces and is conceived as a sort of archipelago of situations uh, that can be adapted to every, to every community and to different needs. For example, if a community has more, has more children, for example, perhaps more playgrounds will, will be there or sports facilities, etc. And then the upper levels uh, of the grid are the, 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 the built buildings, the apartments, and then the voids ensure like, like a reasonable distance between each of them, and it allows like every unit to have at least three opening points. This is sort of this idea of, of this more abstract order um, before, before send it to the, to the competition. Oh, I think. The building is, the, is as, as I told you, the element that, that configures the complex and through its repetition at corner, at, at corner locations, uh, every building has four stories, so the ground floor is always left, uh, left open for, for commercial uses, offices, or for public space. Then it comes the building itself, and it's connected through a vertical circulation. I understood it more as a sort of prefabricated kit, similar to what Jean Prouvé used to do. Uh, finally, the single unit or apartment is the element that defines the dimension of both the building and the 12 by 12 meter grid. Each floor is composed by two apartments of 6, six by 12 uh, meters, um, and they, they all have like uh, 
two openings to, to allow a natural ventilation, illumination, uh, so it can accommodate between four and five persons in each unit. And the interior space uh, is, is, is key in, into this apartment. So, so what we developed was an open, a large open common space rather than, than a series of small spaces. So you have uh, a living room related to, to the kitchen and, and, and to the public areas. And then the, the, the rooms are in the other part. <coughs> This project uh, is Aceros Chile Service Buildings. Um, the commission was the design of a corporate building with a variety of program of offices, meeting rooms, a lunch area, restrooms, and dressing rooms. Uh, and it was very inspired in a, in a studio that we, we gave with Sebastián Irarrazabal, where we studied different fortifications in the south of Chile. Uh, I remember in that studio we read, we read uh, the Paul Virilio book, uh, Bunker Archaeology, so all the images you are going to see are, are, are taken from, from that book. Uh, the site is located in a semi-rural area, uh, which is uh, in the south uh, part of the, of the city of Santiago, along a highway. Uh, so it's a very, in, in some way, um, it, it, it's, a non, it, it's, it's an area that it's mainly surrounded by cars and high speed. Uh, so uh, what, what we thought was that the typical solution of a corporate building um, with a combination of programs in a single volume was obsolete in a place that you can't arrive by foot. So as an archetype, I looked to the defensive military constructions of the Atlantic Wall that were built um, during the World War II which were a series of fortifications, monolith uh, bunkers that uh, set up along the coast. And then these are the examples of those remaining structures nowadays. The bunker in terms of typology is a massive monolithic form of a single material, concrete, placed in a territory in order to defend it. The bunker function with concentric strategies that allows it to dominate the horizon to generate a precise horizontal relation with its context, embracing it entirely by means of minimal apertures. And it's a construction of a protected interior designed to mainly uh, user, to maintain their users safely. So with these values, um, I translated to this project that was located in, in this area. Um, my interest was to translate and decontextualize um, these values, but in a peaceful content, context. That was like the theme we did in, in the studio with Sebastian. And um, we, we took these values and to apply them to a new construction. So we proposed these four cylindrical single material volumes. Uh, and each of them um, have like a different, uh, a different program, starting from, from bathrooms and changing rooms here. Uh, a kitchen and an eating area here, meeting, uh, meeting offices here, and, and, and offices for the workers of this factory in the, in the fourth volume. And it was also a, a constructive strategy because this project uh, was going to be impossible to implement it only in one stage, so divided into four different programs was the strategy to, to go on with it. Um, every volume has the same configuration. Uh, it's very; they are very close to the to the exterior, but they they start generating these internal these internal patios. And here you can see the context where we have this highway. And uh, so so rather than to open to to these parts, we we start creating like this this um, these small situations. This was a. Uh, and almost finish uh, during the construction. So um, the interest was to, to create these patios that can give us like natural light and give, and give privacy, for example, to the changing rooms. Uh, so they start generating like different atmospheres uh, that were very different than the ones that might be offered by the exterior. Um, then the relation to the exterior is configured uh, by two strategies. First, um, Two of the volumes have only like a four centimeter white stripe that, that surround the whole volume and was like above the head, so it gives privacy to the, to the persons that were in the bathroom or changing inside. Uh, it works more uh, as a sort of a spy hole. Um, and then the, the other volumes work with like hatch, uh, hatch type uh, windows, like very punctual windows that 
are located like within the small patios. So you always get a view from the exterior through one of these patios. And this is, this is the, um, a photo previously to, to adding all the vegetation to it. Um, these volumes are very robust constructions, uh, are more evocative to a sort of industrial infrastructure rather than an office or service buildings. And uh, our idea was that since they are in a sort of hostile context and with no history at all, um, we thought like as the bankers on the Atl Atlantic coastline, they might look as ruins scattered across the landscape, this like sort of industrial landscape. Um, the fourth project of this family is called Inverted Dome. It's a large-scale installation made for a music festival that was held in a public park aimed at raising awareness of the pollution of the ocean by disposable plastics. So, so in this case, I will work with, with these ideas of these floating uh, plastic islands that are in the oceans. Then this works by, by a Korean artist that hangs uh, all these plastic and garbage elements. Uh, the piers, the wooden piers that you can find in, in the coastline all around the world. And then this idea of the domes that might be like, like a conventional dome or an inverted dome uh, as a structure that can held a lot of, um, a lot of weight. So the, the pavilion presents the accumulated plastic and waste in its actual discarded state, just as, as is it found floating on the sea like a sort of island. Uh, these were like the concept images uh, we prepared for the for the competition. Um, since it was for the Lollapalooza for the Lollapalooza festival, we did not have an, a specific site um, bef uh, in the competition. So so we we work with these very like abstract images and we work with the round shape because it was like a way to to have the same value. Uh, it doesn't matter where you approximate the the volume. Um, I had no interest in presenting the garbage in an attractive way. Uh, I prefer to make a sort of impact by showing it in its raw state. So this image sort of contrasts the, the inspiration that came uh, from this project, from this, uh, from this artist, and then the idea of hanging these two tons of, um, of waste using um, just fishing mesh and, and these, um, these tensors. The inverted dome is also a unique and singular form um, that generates a notable, not, um, a notable space underneath itself. The wooden structure is configured by the repetition of a single piece that alludes to the wooden piers found on every coastline in the world. So there's like a sort of direct reference. And the plan is circular, a form that functions very well in this open space of the park since it looks like the same from every angle. So it's a non-hierarchical structure. And this, it was also the most efficient form to sustain the inverted dome, since the weight and the forces are distributed equal across the structure. So that was like a very schematic um, section of it. And this project is it, it's going to be very related to the one that will come, that's, that's a house. And this project was previously, so it gave us the possibility to, to sort of work with this idea of these exoskeletons. And, and I found this image very interesting because it shows like different layers you can find uh, in the project. Uh, you have like the exterior part, then the interior pathway, and then the interior underneath the dome. So um, in, in just a couple of meters, you have like very different situations. The structure can be easily set up and taken down without generating any further waste. It didn't have any foundations. It only worked with gravity and the, and the weight that the two tons give to the structure. So uh, our, our intention is to put it into a new public space uh, probably along the coastline of Chile. Um, the project was uh, this sort of artifact that stand out like unexpectedly in, in the middle of the park and then in the future in the middle of, of, of a coastline in Chile. Um, and the perimeter of the structure was used to sit, rest, uh, also to walk on, and the inner part give you like this, this very sort of strange, uh, unique atmosphere um, that, that was to intention to reflect on, on, on all these elements that you can find in, in the sea.
Structures of Living <clears throat> is an investigation I started three years ago about the role that structure and exoskeletons have in defining the project and giving internal and external order to it. I understand structures as relevant for defining the program, the construction, and the experience within these living spaces. Sorry. Uh, since uh, my office is a two office person and, and these three projects are located a thousand kilometers south of Santiago, um, I designed a sort of strategy uh, that was, that, that gave me the possibility to in, first to develop these projects and then to have control of them. This constraint led me um, to only use this, this one section to configure then the whole. So here you, you've, you have the, the section I think it doesn't look very clear. The, the section of, of the first house uh, that was raised above the ground and has these diagonals that, to support this um, these, these very large roof. Then the variation of, 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 of this structure led me to, to the design of this new one where we extended the roof and we had a terrace because like the exterior part of the house was as important as, as the interior part of the house. And this is the third variation we have been working on, uh, which is a two-story house where we inverted the program. So you have like the public spaces in the upper part and then the, the private spaces in the lower part. So you can have like the, 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 the visual to the, um, to the landscape. Um, this, this is the first house. Um, so it was entirely made of wood. All of these projects are governed by two concepts, order and structure. Um, in our many visits to, to Lake Ranco, which is this lake that's located a thousand kilometers south of Santiago in the recent years, we have always been very interested in the, this mid 20th century shed, uh, which I think it's a sort of uh, German, German, inspired, uh, German inspired construction uh, that has the particularity of the, that it's structured using beams, pillars, and struts, which can be observed. Um, uh, when, when you enter this town of, of, of Utrono. And the remarkable thing about this construction is that it ex it's the exposed structure, which is something very, very rare. They're always like wrappings, more on the logic of the school than to have all the structure exposed. So this, this idea of the exoskeleton was the, like the, the beginning of, of, of this sort of research because it was something very particular that we haven't seen it before. The design of the house um, takes this structural principle of the pillar, the strut, and the beam, and take it to the to the whole to the whole project, defining its exterior, but as well as the, the interior patio. The house is a square plan. It's organized around like this central patio, which allows uh, us to have like multiple interior and exterior relationships. Uh, the landscape in, in this part is, is incredible, and, and, and one of the faces faces the, the water, which might be the, like the obvious vista. But then you have like the topography, the, the, the woods that are, that surround it. So, so for us, they were as important as the, as the lake. So that's why we, we instead of building just, um, just one shed, we, we turned to use this, uh, this scheme. And the other thing that was important is, uh, well, in Chile, you have the sun through the north, which I think it's your south, but um, like the sun is always from in, in your back. So this was very important because in, is, if we have created just a volume facing the lake, it, it will be impossible for the house to have like uh, natural sunlight. So that's why we created these elements. So you always have sun uh, through, the, through the back of the, of the project. So um, it's, it does not face uh, one specific direction. Uh, this multi-directionality um, take it away from this idea of the common place solution of always having like the vista um, on it. So you start having like this this sort of small woods that that surrounded the the plot. And I start create, we start creating like different uh, relationships to, to the more like immediate context, such as these tree trunks, the grass, the rocks, 
the intermediate context such as the woods, the meadows, and the water, and then the distant context, which I think the, the first images show better, which is the lake, the islands, the hills, etc. This is the, um, the plan of the house. Uh, the program is designed to meet the needs of a large family and was organized uh, in, in the idea or in the logic of an hotel with a series of bedrooms. Uh, each of, of them were equipped with its own bathroom and so you access through this point. You have the kitchen here, which is very important because the fire is in it, so, so it gives warmth to the house. Then we have like the public areas in this part. And then the circulation around the patio gives you access to, access to the, every, every of the rooms. And then in, in this corner, you have like the terrace, which faces like the, the lakes into two directions. The other interesting thing is that um, by being in one place of the house, you always have like a, a general view of it. So you always have, um, have control. And there's a, the insertion of this patio made it possible to establish this new relation with the exterior by containing or enclosing a small size of, of nature in, in this sort of spectacular surrounding. The patio also generates this double orientation in, in all the bays and provides the space with plenty natural light during the day. So this is what I, what I told you before. The sun to the, to the living room comes from its back. And also what, what was very interesting um, on, on working with these very regular uh, structures is the exceptions that start happening. For example, when you have the terrace, uh, you sort of unbuild some parts of the, um, of the wall so, so, so structure starts appearing in a very different, different way and then comes like the stairs. So, so those uh, key moments are very important for the, for the design. So again, the house is configured by this idea of the single section, repeated, systematized, with all the structural elements exposed beneath this large roof. Um, we decided to use the exoskeleton and making the structure independent of the cladding. Um, not, uh, and this was also a sort of build strategy because uh, in this part you have like a rain season which is very long. So we have only a couple of months to mount all the structure. So what we built, uh, we built the, the, the whole exoskeleton and then we put the roof. And that, that gave us the protection to, to work into the interiors uh, through the rainy season. So, so it was not only a sort of architecture decision, but it was also like a constructive decision to to make this project into 10 months instead of, 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 of needing perhaps two years since we were not going to be able to work in the rainy season, which is very strong. And then uh, we start working with the interiors, um, start having like very different relationships. Um, so in the living, you have like the, this, this, this old, to the patio, this whole height uh, windows, but then we, we make like these very punctual uh, openings in order to preserve the warmth of the house. Um, and we start like we, we design like many of the furnitures of the house since it's a very like far place uh, and we have like very good craftsmen. So, for example, we design uh, the like the, the the beds, the berth, uh, using all that knowledge and, and and gives like a very particular atmosphere to the project. And then about the landscape, we did no not design anything. We just let what was there to to grow. To, to grow and just like the, this is a, a photo took a couple of months after the, the house was done. So, so this, you can see like the grass start to, to, to grow again and, and then it will be like um, becoming much more interesting through the past of the years. Um, from this house, um, we were commissioned to, to, to another project that was for the, for the brother of, of this client. Uh, that has a site very next to it. Um, we wanted to, to keep exploring this idea of the exoskeleton, um, but making some variations for him, for example, it was very important, the exterior, so the, the, the terrace of the project was, was very important. And he, uh, we also make it very close to the, to the lake. You can see here the beach, and then the house is just uh, next to the beach. Um, 
and we work here with um, with with ha having the same principle of dividing the house in, in in this case into two since it's smaller than the other one, and we have this this small patio which uh, it's not a sort of living patio but uh, it gives us the possibility to to bring the natural light again in it. Then the terrace is much more important than in the other one. They make like a lot of his life in the outside, so so we start designing this sort of third volume of or like the third of the surface is this exterior and to respect the existing trees of the site so so here there are going to be like trees that that were uh, existing on the site and then we have like a more public uh, a more public volume which has like the a very big kitchen uh, living room dining areas and then the main bedroom and then connected through these two elements, these two bridges, you have like the like the guest pavilion for for the friends, uh, families, etc. We also um, um, start experimenting with the idea of not of of showing the structure not only to the outside, but also to the inside. So uh, all like the beams uh, are are in, in in this variation are 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 presented in the in the interior space with. I, we think that it starts adding something very new that the previous house didn't have. And, and then this terrace was the thing that was very important. So we have like here like a sort of four meter cantilever which generates this whole new livable space uh, beneath this big roof. The sections, uh, as you can see, are very simple. Again, this idea of, of, of repeating just one section and and let the, the happen all, all the all the all the rest of the project. As you can see here, this is the the, the patio I was telling you, and and then I just like. Uh, And this shows this space I was talking to you before, and the idea of also bringing the nature inside uh, inside the, the living spaces. This is a project we are working now on, and I hope we start building it uh, this month. It's it's a very um, it's a very sort of complicated plot since it has like a, a, a very big difference between the part that we are locating the project, which is here, and then like the beach and 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 the, the part you you have the dock and, and everything. So um, it's a much larger plot. So so now we are we are cleaning it and we are going to 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 propose the project in this part here. <coughs> Is a two-story house uh, which follows like the same principle of the exoskeleton, but here we inverted the program so, so all the public programs are located in the upper part with a height of 3.6 meters, and then the like the first floor has all the all the private spaces, the bedrooms, etc., which is only 2.4 meters. Uh, the we we have we we proceed with this decision also because since you saw like the cut of the terrain is very hard so uh you access through the second floor so that's why this is much uh this is much higher again it is very related to the um, to the um, to the to the shed that show you firstly so that german shed uh the, was very inspiring for all of these three projects and then uh, again, the exceptions start being like some things that you cannot design. For example, the stair that connects like the like the side with the public areas was very important. The, f the second floor, uh, you access through a bridge, and you have like all these public these public areas, always relating the kitchen because you you here we we use like fire stoves, so so it's also a way of of giving warmth to the to the house and only the main bedroom. Um, is kept in the in in this floor. So when the when the, um, the 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 persons that live in this house go without their children, they can only use like this only this this first floor. And then in the second in the in the in the other floor, you have a uh, like all the bedrooms, uh, a small living room, uh, like the service areas, etc. And, and and it's very again interesting because um, here you can see all the structure, which is very dense, and then. In the in the first floor, it becomes much more lighter, so so it allows you to to have a very different structural situation. 
we are now uh, in, in, in this case we're exploring then again the idea of keeping the structure in, in the inside and, and now ja not only use like natural wood we are start painting so so every project is is uh, is an occasion to start making small changes small improvements um to to the one before and then here you can find this this idea of of this uh of, of the access to the second floor because you access from this part so uh it was also like an opportunity to to gain some height to to have the, the the vista of of the lake and the uh, and the like the the farthest uh, geography, but then the, the 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 part behind it was also very important. So here are some some interior renderings. And this uh, this third theme, uh, I call it the new possibilities of living experiences. Um, architecture in Chile is mainly rooted into modern tradition, and since 2013, I've been investigating the new possibilities of living and working experiences uh, that I can propose an architecture solutions like literally out of the box. This research um, started uh, six years ago with a wooden pavilion that is self-supported by bending uh, CNC grooved plywood panels. Uh, this constructive uh, operation gives the possibility then to trace any plan shape as you're going to see in, in a little bit. Uh, this wooden pavilion uh, led, led us to an investigation about the role of experience in architecture, investigating the concept of reflection and applying it to, to a new project that was the first time that we operate in the public space. So. So it was like a very important project for, for our office. And then the two, the, these two pavilions then led me to investigate like the domestic and programmatic answers that this structural and, and very strange geometric uh, research um, might be applied to, to living spaces. So the third pavilion uh, is the first experiment in, in applying this to, to a living uh, program. So this is a, an investigation that, that it's ongoing. It all started with this, uh, this uh, wood pavilion. It was called the Woods, and it was also it was a competition that we we won the first prize with Nicolas Ursua, which is a friend of mine. Um, the forest or the woodland uh, was a recurrent theme, mainly in, in lit literature, mythology, painting, and the arts in general, as, as you're going to see, like in this imaginary here. Um, and for me, its interest resides in the complexity and the singularity. Although, like the forest is composed of multiple examples, for example, of the same unit, uh, you're never going to have like the same place in it. So, so this this idea was very inspiring for developing uh, the project. Um, th then, the presence of countless sensorial stimuli. Uh, that you have in the forest, like it's not only a visual experience, but but you experience like uh, with all different senses, you start smelling different things, temperature change radically from one part to the other. So, so there's a quote by Joanny Palasma which says, "Vision separates us from the world, whereas the other senses unite us with it." So this was very important also for the developing um, of, of of this pavilion. The, the complexity is, is expressed with great precision in a passage devoted to the Chilean forest by, by poet Pablo Neruda in his memoirs, Confieso que he vivido, which in, in one paragraph he describes all his, these experiences. Um, and then this was a very important and, and, and key moment for developing this project. Uh, this competition um, was an invitation of a wooden company to use plywood panels, which is a very rigid and structural element, to configure a pavilion. So, so our, our idea came from these, uh, these sort of prints that were done by Brian Nash Hill, which is an American artist. Uh, that what he does is that when he founds like a, a tree or um, like in the in the wood, he cut it and then he applied ink to the to the whole to the whole surface and then he this print this ink is translated to a paper. So you start getting all these complexities. So uh, like you can imagine that a tree is a sort of circular shape, but actually it's like a very like. Uh, shape with concavities and convexity. So that was what we intended to translate into the, into the project. Um, 
this was the plan of the pavilion. Uh, so we wanted to create like different interrelations, transparencies, claroscuros that evoke a range of different atmospheres that we wanted to create. So instead of working with the panel as this rigid, orthogonal, modular, and non-deformable constructive elements, what we did was to, to apply like uh, these sort of CNC lines that uh, give us the possibility to, to change the structure of the panel to a remarkably very flexible, uh, curvable element, but without losing its structural properties. So, so this was like the section of this, of this, um, of this pavilion, and then this was the mock-up we built to, to try to demonstrate that, that our theory was, was working. Then I was very also inspired um, in these screens that are done by Alvaralto or the IMS. Uh, I remember in the, after we won the competition, uh, one of the juries told us that uh, the pavilion we designed for the competition had only 2.4 meters, so um, what he pointed out was that this was a very domestic scale, so, so our challenge has to do with changing like the scale of these elements, so to turn it from a screen to an actual building or, or livable place. So I found this uh, skyscraper done by Miss van der Rohe, which uh, in some way is very related to its shape, and, and it gives you the possibility of creating a very particular uh, plan using like this sort of extrusion of elements, although like Mies was pursuing like very different things. So the project, it's more a sort of an open form, a formal constructive strategy, which allows us to have like multiple responses and the possibility of of then adapting this pavilion to different contexts, vistas, places, or interior spaces. And this was the mock-up we, we made uh, with, with uh, sorry, uh, with two, uh, 3.2 meters height. So what we did is we translate, we translate uh, one panel with the other one. So you start having like these, these sort of transparencies, then it gets more dense and, and you start like having like different uh, sort of atmospheres. Um, I'm not being able to, to build the, com the, the complete project, but um, it was very important to set up the next project that, that we did, which was um, the Young Architects Program, which is a program that it's done yearly in Chile, and it's open to, to young practices, as its name says. So at that point, um, I was very interested in the idea of the reflection. Uh, so it was the getting into this competition was a good excuse to to being able to to kind of merge or blend this interesting uh, in curves and counter curves that were um, tested in the previous pavilion to this sort of very like into the experience uh, pavilion. So works by Arlender, Julia Le Park were very were, were very important for these projects. Also uh, some visual and optical uh, themes such as concavity, convexity, and, and the thing that it has into, into the reflection. Then like, um, like local wildflowers or, or, or the idea of landscape reflected, for example, in these paintings, by, in the series of paintings by Alfred Sisley, some, some fragments of, of, of cinema or, or then constructions such as the Palacio del Alba y el Ocaso or the, or the Etza building by Coderqui in, in Barcelona were very important for, for this research, such as paintings by, by Magritte or even like the, the diptychs and triptychs by, 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 by Bacon that in some way we're seeing as a, um, as a, as a, as a, as a way of understanding um, at some point movement, uh, deformations, etc. So this project was located in Parque Araucano, which is a public park in the city of Santiago. And um, like the goal was to produce an interaction with the park users using these concave and convex curves. Um, like reflection and deformation is very difficult to, to be tested uh, using a computer or even models. So um, it was also a very big challenge to see what was going to, to happen. This, these were some, some um, sort of uh, renderings we did, and I want to to show the video um, that we present to present we present to the jury that kind of um, summarized like this whole experience. Um, Murder me here. 
Your sailor friend will get the blame. You'll be free to spend my money. We do not know with certainty whether your reflection is an experience, an illusion, a landscape, a place, an object, an attempt at surrealist construction, an artistic approach, or a mix of several of these. This unstable or uncertain position facing something that is difficult to determine but that is capable of questioning the visitor and returning to something that gives sense to the project seduces us. Uncertainty is an uncomfortable position, but certainty is an absurd position. Voltaire. We have meant to build an uncertain experience, a situation of estrangement, one which we do not intend on controlling, as the possibilities of reflection and deformation provoked by the concave and convex mirrored steel bidimensional planes are infinite as we move through it. We want the visitor to be expectant of what is going to surprise them in the next place. The project has its starting point in the two definitions of the word reflection. On one side, the little optical reflection, deformed and multiplied, in the physical sense of the phenomenon, and the reflection in a mental sense, on seeing oneself reflected, deformed in the project and that this duality generates a certain state of introspection. The name that we have given the proposal alludes precisely to this double condition, your reflection, where the personal pronoun your alludes to the project existing in the means that the visitor is in it and with it, and the project is capable of, of producing something in this visitor. Without this witness, the project would not exist. It is not just about looking at the project, but letting it surround you, envelop you, to become part of it, and that it becomes part of you, passively and actively, following our own capacities of observation and reflection. The materialization of this experience is achieved through two operations. The first is the definition of a support or topography, a landscape with smooth mounds covered in grass and spongy vegetation, colored by an infinite number of different wildflowers. And that will also be covered by a small creek that could be crossed with a simple leap. This landscape is taken from an imaginary location which may be a wild meadow or the moment of some painting by Alfred Sisley. We believe that the natural, artificial slope and sponginess is one of the most pleasant places to walk, sit down, rest or lie down. The second operation is the insertion of three mirrored steel bidimensional planes, which build a series of inside and outside spaces, eliminating the limits, disappearing, letting its reflected surroundings become the real project. It is the relationship between these three bidimensional planes that forms an asymmetric volume almost broken up, where the construction of the form itself does not interest us, rather than the interaction between the mirrored planes, the curves and the counter curves, where we have multiplied the amount of reflecting and deformation situations in order to produce an interaction belonging to a world of illusions. There are no horizontal roof elements. The light and the shade are formed and projected on the ground by the effect of the vertical plane. The proximity of the plane will be inclined to shape the mound for most of the day, generating a temperate environment, which is also refreshed by the sound and the presence of the creek running through this landscape. The curves, counter curves, and the fact that at many moments the tapes are facing each other and at different distances will generate a universal reflection, multiplications and deformations, as if we were in a painting of René Magritte or even facing some portraits by Francis Bacon. This experience is achieved as we move into the project. Our degree of approach varies. 
we approach it, touch it, we move away. These situations are intensified in the means that more bodies move through this place, generating choreography of colors and movements that will be infinitely multiplied. We have wanted to change the center of the object's proposal to the experience of the subject, their interaction and that of others, and how their surroundings or context will be reflected and deformed with them and before them. In the end, we do not intend on building a closed proposal, but rather articulating a universe of sensations and experiences open to many things taking place. So um, with that video um, and, and, and with the concept we developed, well, we got the first prize in this competition and um, we then have like a technical challenge to take this concept and to turn it into, into a real project. So um, we had like this, this sort of shape, this plan shape, and, and the thing that we, we start doing was to to defining six different ra uh, radios um, associated to a different panel that m might be combined uh, between each other. So, so did w this was like the, the constructive possibility we, we see to build this project using uh, reflective aluminum panels that can be combined in any way. This was the, the construction plan of the, of the project. It, it's only defined by a plan. It, it doesn't have any more details. So, so here you have like all the radios and the combinations of, of these panels. Um, and we work with uh, Hunter Douglas, which is an industrial manufacturer in, in Chile to produce and build uh, these different panels starting from the from the from these reflecting elements using a honeycomb uh, be, uh, a honeycomb stru internal structure um, that was placed into these panels and, and gives us the possibility to to raise this element using only 2.5 centimeters height uh, and it has 3.2 centimeters um, complete. And then the, um, like the, the, the way we constructed was only to build a sort of canal, a 20 centimeter canal in the, in the ground and then pl only place these panels and then fill it with earth. So um, after we ended, um, I wanted to show a video that, that show how, how this project um, was being used after the what is very, very interesting is that the, the first uh, like shoots shot uh, shows the, the project without any persons, so it's so it might be understood mainly as a sculpture, which was not uh, the purpose that we wanted to give. But I think the project starts appearing when the users uh, start um, experience the, the project.
So here are some reference like this idea of, of these are blender paintings. Um, the lady from Shanghai, uh, different scenes that, that were very inspiring to, to take or all that material and try to get something into the project. It's very important um, for me to use like these uh, sort of reference coming from, from other art fields because uh, I think of that, that for example, that that piece from, from, from the film, it's, it's very intense and it's very condensed and to try to, 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 to bring something out, out of it and, and take it to the project might give like a, something very, very important to it. So I think um, literature or, or cinema or arts uh, kind of propose and, and solve things in, in a much richer way than, than an architecture can. So, so taking some of those parts and trying to translate it to, to it is, is, is a way to, to give a sort of subjects and, and condensity to it. This was the final plan that's very similar to the, to the one that, that, that we presented. And this is like the project located in, in, in the middle of, 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 the, of this park. So, so the idea was also to, to be able to make it invisible in some way and to start having like this bl very blurry uh, situation. So it starts blending with with uh, like with the surroundings and, and having like this sort of artificial natural um, landscape work um, was like one half of the of the project with with these water elements these uh, sort of shadow sheds um, and and the constructive principle and and that was just it. And then what was very interesting is that this pavilion um, was also created as, as this idea of, 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 of a model to be replicated, um, like in, in very different parts. So after the, the young, uh, young Architects program uh, was finished, it was bought and taken by a good friend and a client of mine to its nursery garden, which is located 900 kilometers south of Santiago in a place called Pangipulli. Um, since the original project was very large, we divided it into two small pavilions that are now located in, in this nursery. So it's, it's understood as a sort of landmark, uh, a place where, where they gather and where they bring their, their visit into this um, amazing, amazing landscape. And I wanted to, to finish um, with, with this project. It's a, it's a very small scale project. It's called Species of Spaces. Uh, and it's, it's the attempt to, to configure a small living space or a refugee. Uh, continuing this uh, research carried over the last years on constructing and structuring um, using these almost two, two dimension elements. Um, the first project, the, the first, the wooden project, we use uh, 1.8 uh, centimeter thickness panels. Then the, the the young architects program use like the same uh, thickness, and in this um, in this project, uh, we wanted to push those limits, and 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 we're, we were able to resolve it using only three millimeter height and and, and bending it to to make the whole structure uh, of it. This collage by the Eames was very important for this project because uh, with a very few elements is able to, to transmit the idea of a domestic space. So, so adding, the pro, uh, adding a program to, to this sort of uh, more leisure or experience pavilion was like the challenge I'm in on now. Um, this is, these are previous renderings, so uh, you see like the, the furniture, like the pieces of furniture you start adding to the project are, are very important and it's defined uh, by only using two kind of curves, 20 centimeter and 40 centimeter diameters uh, to create this sort of fluid space um, and create a sort of smaller interrelated spaces with a uh, varying degrees of privacy. Uh, and it, it, the, the experience of this place will change depending on the point of the point of view of it. So you have like, and the idea of not understanding whether you are in the interior or the exterior is something that that uh, I'm very interested in to it also. Um, there's of course a direct re relationship with a Savoy base designed by Alvaralto and with many uh, of, of, of Alvaralto's works. 
And what was also very interesting was um, that when I presented this, this, uh, this pavilion, uh, the Chilean designer Alberto Vitelio, which I didn't know at that time, was presenting and exposing in that same exhibition uh, this base. So um, it was very interesting to see that uh, we were working with a designer uh, with the same interests and concerns, but in two very different scales. And the way that the way he crafts his, this, uh, this element is very interesting because he places like a sort of metal sticks to it. To, to a sort of base, and then uh, he used blown glass, and the blown glass fulfills these, these elements. So in, in, in a way, just by, sh by changing these sticks, he's able to, to create infinite um, versions of this, of this uh, design object. And um, in, in my case, like, the, the element is so thin that you're able to, to almost uh, trace any, any plant shape. So this was the project that we proposed. It was uh, like a three areas project that has like a sort of more public or living room next to a working space. Uh, we had like a sort of what, what we call a sort of bedroom or bedding into, into this one and then like the bathroom, it's, it's located there. So we are alter, uh, alternating a workspace, a rest space, a washing space. And uh, depending on, on your point of view, uh, the relations in, in this project will start to, to appear. So furnishing for it, it's very important. And then um, this idea of generating these unexpected visual interrelations for this project, uh, we use, um, we use, as I told you, two, uh, we use two millimeters aluminum panels that were bended. So every three centimeters, we make a sort of bending to it. So it, they are not actual curves. They are composed by a, seri a series of linear, um, like linear bends. And again, uh, this idea of this little dwelling, uh, more than a closed form, is, is an open system of configuration that allows you uh, allows us to to generate like different spatial orders, and it can be constructed and adapted to, for example, different programmatic requirements, user preferences, or locations within the whole. So again, the idea of having like just one rule and with that rule being able to, to resolve like very different, uh, very different projects is something that, that I'm very interested in too. So that will be, thank you. per dire qualcosa o qualche domanda o, o qualche intervento altrimenti provo, provo a, a introdurre alcune questioni io e poi spero che interveniate voi intanto grazie a Guillermo per, per la sua relazione eh, What, what I think uh, is uh, quite astonishing, but very interesting, of your, of your uh, track is uh, that you, you had, uh, had shown uh, a, a series of, uh, of things uh, that are quite well related to the tradition of the modern architecture uh, in, in, in the first phase. And you conclude with, uh, with uh, another modern uh, reference you know, of, of Alvarado or also of this heretical uh, type of modern, more interested uh, in, uh, in a space of multisensorial space and so on. And so the first question is if 
if, is, is, is it an evolution of your thought about, uh, about architecture or simply a different experimentation of, of it? And the second one is, I think, uh, you are a very interesting uh, uh, in your research. I think it's very interesting the the idea to use the material and the composition of materials, and so the constructive uh, idea of uh, of uh, a sort of kit of uh, montage. Uh, montage kit uh, as a tool to uh, to organize spa space and architecture uh, in, a, in a very interesting way because uh, in reality you are interested I, I, it seems you are interested to use the materials and the elements but uh, with the finality, which is uh, more complex and more uh, synthetic uh, to, to construct spaces which are uh, flexible, but also very, with, with a, a, a strong identity. And so I, I, I'm wondering, if uh, is this uh, a, a sort of uh, your learned uh, uh, attitude to to build architecture with the method of composing things uh, uh, in 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 this idea of montage uh, you you have the, also a relationship with the cinema uh, in, in some, some parts. And so uh, I'm interested if you are uh, working on, on, on this uh, concept of non montage also in relation to the cinema. Se nel frattempo poi qualcuno ha delle altre domande, intanto sentiamo la risposta a questo. Well, well, thank you, thank you for the questions. Um, regarding the first one, uh, this idea of like modern rooted architecture, which is like um, it's very easy to see in Chile, of course, and, and this idea of these uh, new forms that I, I'm, th I'm like after it. Um, I will have to say that perhaps uh, now I'm more conscious of this idea of the two paths I, I've been working on. So um, from one hand, I will have to say that, that they run into, in, into sort of like parallel roads. Uh, but in the, in the, in the last time, um, I'm, I'm thinking a lot on the idea that perhaps um, we are making architecture like similar to the last 80 years perhaps mm -hmm. with of course many variations and so so what started to to be a response for for a competition perhaps um not very conscious at the beginning with the wooden pavilion which was more on the idea of taking a material to its limits and be able to configure something like uh, i think there's appears something very interesting so um that's why now I'm, I'm, I'm more conscious about it and, and, and more interested in to take it to, to um, let's say, more conventional projects, perhaps. Because, of, of course, you can be working on these uh, like a sort of pavilions and you will be simplifying the, the problem, not having, like, for example, a sort of client, not having a, not having a program. So, so it might remain into that state. So, so now um, I will say my energies are conducted into the idea of trying to, to evolve from these uh, very modern rooted uh, projects to this, I don't know how to say, this sort of like new form. So that's why this small pavilion, although um, uh, 
I think it's interesting. It fails in many ways because, uh, like, I think the, uh, I'm able to structuring um, a sort of project, but I believe that that a reflection about what will those curves be, for example, in a programmatic use, might be something very interesting to to continue. So, so I, I see it as a sort of of, of in progress uh, family of projects. Um, and to be honest, I, I, I think there, there are like two paths of, uh, the, the, I see it as two paths um, of developing architecture. And uh, I think I won't be interesting just to keep it like on this other side, like the other, like the other, the other, um, um, let's say, way of, 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 of working and building is also like very interesting. And I think like, they can be interrelating one to each other, or maybe it can be a sort of blend or a sort of project that has the, the, the own parts might be a, a possibility. Um, about uh, like the, the, the material question and the, and the idea of montage, um, I, I will have to say that, that um, um, I'm very interested, for example, in, in, into cinema because uh, it's, it gives you like the, 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 the possibility of, of first making a, a sort of storytelling. Uh, cinema is very clear into, into, into not only like construct an atmosphere, but also it's, it's a very interesting way of, of, of telling a story, for example. I think many of those, uh, of those um, experiences can be translated to, to architecture from uh, the way you, you, you develop a project, let's say, and how you represent it. It's very different to, for example, present it just as plans a section, perhaps as the way I did it, than to, for example, present it uh, thinking, for example, in, a, in an invented user. That may be like, like one of the possibilities I'd see to the, to the idea of montage to, to think about the project. I think some of them um, are more successful in this idea of montage and collage. Perhaps the, 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 the pavilion, the, the, the your reflection pavilion, um, is very related to, to this idea of, of, of like putting over the table um, like very different references, um, let's say from painting, like from different interesting, and, and start making an, a collage more of experiences rather than than physical or real situations. Uh, in, in the, uh, I wanted to show you the, fir the first video because um, in some way it's only a, a concept. It's nothing more than that. And, and, and you're able to create a concept using this idea of, 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 of montaging like these very different like, images taken from others because uh, no, no, no of those images were, were, were created by us, just like this sort of a very, um, low low tech renderings and to be able to create a concept that then can lead us to to a project so so in some way the idea of of, of montage or, or collage at the same way might be like a, like the way to get into a project and then uh, solve it using like more conventional tools as, as the one you saw in in the industry um, and then it, Taking that idea to to the like to the to the to the material or or or, or the way of composition or, or building, I will say um, since um, like the wooden houses are very, um, I won't say that they are like uh, very low budget. They are like medium budget, um, but they are like. Um, they are very low tech in some way. They are crafted like a thousand kilometers south of Chile, uh, of Santiago. So uh, we we use like those knowledge from from the craftsmen. And and what's very interesting about wood is that that uh, it's it's like you start like working with uh, adding like different pieces. And I think that. That, that this idea of adding might be related to idea of, of like montaging, of, of, of adding things. Uh, and then not only to, to, to be able to build a project, but to use like this idea of construction and structure um, as, as elements that might um, affect like the, like the daily life. So for example, you place like the pillars every 1.8 meters. So that in some way um, 
immediately restricts the idea of having like this plain vista. You start having a vista through, uh, through, for example, through a structure, and 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 that only the, and that decision leads you to some constructive decisions. Then you start using like those sort of modules. So so um, like this idea of, of 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 a montage of elements not only affects like the the, the construction of the project itself, but the relationship you start having. Uh, using the projects or, or getting a uh, relationship with the exterior or the interiors. Thank you. I think that that's like a, it's a great question. Um, I will say I, I first I, I try to use like don't use like the word reference because I think uh, it's related first to like the whole the whole, for example if you use some project as a reference uh, you might be using like the whole project and the whole knowledge of that project to the to the one you're trying to do in in my case like like every image or fragment is more like the the, the element I'm, I'm referring to so for example let's say um, in, in 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 the project of, of the pavilion I, I show you an image of the Koderk patio in the sub uh, I'm only interested into that part only like not in the in the whole building but just that bidimensional uh, element. Uh, how do I use, and use it to the projects? Um, I think uh, the, this idea of imaginaries uh, is turning into a more complex and more conscious way of working, uh, and it's very. It's, and, and at the same time, it's very subjective. It's very related to things that interest me, and um, perhaps. At one point, you look something, you like it, you sort of record it or keep it, and it might appear, I don't know, three or four years later. Uh, one of the collages of, of this project I showed uh, had the, the pavement of the Olivetti store in, in, here in Venice. Uh, here, right? Of course, we were, we were at that point. We were, uh, it wasn't a possibility to 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 use this payment due to like a budget problem. But I remember I saw I saw I visited the the, the Olivetti in about 2014, and at, at that time I, I like found like a payment. Uh, was able to be done in that way, and and I keep that record of it, and it appeared like three years later. So in some ways, it works as a, as as that way. I, I and uh, being more conscious about things like you hear, you read, or you, or or you watch, let's say. And uh, um, as I say at the beginning, uh, mainly of these references are also sort of gifts from others. For example, the the, the bunkers uh, I showed you. Uh, that project wa was impossible to be like that if I wasn't invited by Sebastián Irrazabal to do that workshop where he, he in, in that case, like, uh, I don't know, eight years ago, introduced me to Paul Virilio's work. So um, mainly conversations with others or when you're sharing with your, with your colleagues uh, about a project, uh, they might, for example, tell you, oh, th this has a reference or it might be related to this. And of course, when you are like a start researching for a project, uh, and for example, let's say you go into Alvaralto Al screens, uh, directly the aim screens started to appear, so, so um, like you just drop one element and then like a whole, whole world start to, to be appearing. So, so it's, it doesn't work like if I have to do a project, I found like this sort of imaginaries or reference there. And sometimes uh, you are very interested in to applying some of these to a project, which is the case of the Reflection Pavilion. Uh, 
our intention to get into the, that competition was that we wanted to work with mirrors and reflections because like um, we were very interested, for example, in Julia de Park's work. So, so also the project is a is a sort of um, excuse to to start like digging into into very different things. And as I say, it's it's like a very personal it's a very personal thing. And and, and again, that project shows that. Uh, I show you like the concept and and all the reference that are behind the project. And uh, I will say that that might be like the like the the cooking part of the of it at the end you open you open the project and and i don't know let's say the clients or the users get to it and they don't care much if you were seeing like this one or that one that's also like a tool for me to 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 give coherence to the design process but what what is really interesting is that when the project like uh sees the light or, or let's say it, uh, it appears like all that parts leave, uh, gets behind and, you, and, and, and now there are different like sort of forces uh, that start affecting the project. So that's why um, I'm also interested not to get projects and build, but to be able to test those intentions uh, into, into a sort of more real scale. Adrian? No question? I, I, I tried to, to have another, another general question. Uh, it, it seems that, uh, and uh, I, know, I don't know if uh, it's uh, a condition of your specific work in, in this phase or or a general uh, philosophy of, of yours. But uh, it appears that you conceive, in a way, the, the, the architecture as a sort of device to, to meet the problem of uh, our contemporary epoch. And so, uh, Many of, of the project you show uh, are provisional or something provisional are not specifically ephemeral but uh, more experimental uh, in, uh, in, in the way probably to, uh, to respond to problems of uh, not not of permanent things, but uh, more provisional things. You, you, you were also speaking of refugees and so on. And I, I think this is a very high problem we have in this moment. And probably the, the architecture m must meet this, this type of problem. But I, I want to, to say, to, to have your opinion about uh, if if it's a, a choice or or what? No, it's it's also in, it's 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 also great and and it's very interesting this idea of the the ephemeral or the provisional. Um, I remember I think like Cedric Price was very interesting or, or or questioning the idea that if architecture has to be permanent or not, and main of the buildings. Uh, or, or the projects that he, he made uh, weren't like meant to to last forever. So, so it's really interesting, like um, perhaps to give a thought about that idea if architecture um, has to last forever or not. I, in in my case, I think it has to do with with uh, like the projects and the competitions uh, I've been on. Uh, mainly, they are temporal. So. Uh, so that gives you at the same time, since, uh, for example, let's say a client or someone is, is asking for a temporal project, um, he might be open to, let's say, more radical or less conventional responses to it. So, so we take what might be a sort of constraint or limitation to be, or, or to give like more, more, more power to the project. So, so perhaps in, in an, and then, uh, like a more strange project, let's say. Um, 
someone might not be interesting in to take a risk on building him for himself, I don't know, a sort of this curve and counter curves. Uh, so it, I also use uh, those sort of um, non-permanent uh, projects as ways to, to start mastering something. So um, now that I have developed like three different projects using this technique, I might uh, be more secure uh, to, to apply it to a permanent situation and, uh, and I will take the risk because I, I sort of uh, have more experience on, on doing, on doing those, uh, on doing those um, um, because of that experience. Um, and the, the, the other thing that is that uh, although they are impermanent, some of them are being like reinstalled. For example, the, your reflection pavilion uh, uh, was, um, which was a surprise, was taking, uh, was uh, had like a, a different use, and, and and it was also interesting too, because I think in that project the concept is more strong than the project itself. So that gives us the freedom again to to change like the, the original shape, which wasn't like the important thing, and to change it and to divide it into two different into two different elements. So so again I think it's a way um, it's a very it, it will be a very playful way also to, to be experiment with these ideas. It works also on the process. Uh, mm. yeah. Absolutely. Any question? Are you satisfied? <laughs> well, uh, in questo caso, allora, se non ci sono altre domande, possiamo ritenerci paghi per questa. Purtroppo è anche molto freddo qua dentro, quindi mi rendo conto che è difficile <laughs> continuare. Eh, è solo un avvio, come vi, vi dicevo all'inizio, di, di questo ciclo che avrà una serie di altre altri appuntamenti interessanti quindi spero che, che possiate intervenire anche prossimamente avremo delle, delle posizioni anche differenti ma eh, un po' il filo, il filo logico il filo rosso che, 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 che vorremmo proseguire a, a discutere è un po' mi pare è stato già un po' posto anche dalla esperienza che ci ha mostrato Guillermo Hevia, cioè questa che mi pare anche interessante, come per, riprendendo questo ultimo discorso che abbiamo fatto, di, di vederlo come anche un po' un, un segno dei tempi. Io credo che eh, al fondo del discorso che, che vogliamo fare, ovviamente, c'è questo, questo tema dello spazio e di come l'esperienza dello spazio eh, si possa eh, misurare rispetto agli strumenti dell'architettura nel contemporaneo ma questo apre per forza di cose io credo questi temi un po' epocali di, di, di una dimensione di, di maggiore variabilità di una dimensione anche di maggiore instabilità della, della condizione in cui in cui tutti quanti viviamo e, e, e rispetto alle quali probabilmente gli strumenti dell'architetto devono anche adeguarsi quindi c'è anche questa, questa condizione io credo che sia interessante penso che lo riprenderemo altre volte questo tema cioè di, di quanto eh, si debba dare anche eh, spazio al, a, a un discorso relazionale processuale non necessariamente eh, arrivando alla definizione oggettuale dell'architettura questo è un po' il discorso che sto facendo anche con i miei studenti nel mio corso eh, tutto questo eh, no, non è un caso poi che su questi temi io sei arrivato eh, prima Guillermo lo citava eh, en passant eh, si è arrivato proprio da, da un rapporto intenso che ho avuto in questi ultimi anni con Giovanni Pallasma eh, cioè su questo ragionamento di un, di un discorso sullo spazio che debba contemplare un rapporto anche con, con la, la dimensione fenomenologica quindi con, la, con le persone, persone che lo spazio usano e, 
e, e, e vivono direttamente. Quindi per questo ho voluto parlare di esperienza dello spazio, che è qualcosa di più del discorso formale. Mi pare che nel discorso che ci ha mostrato Guillermo vengono fuori bene queste questioni, perché si parte da una manipolazione dello spazio quasi legata a un discorso di geometrie delle forme e poi si arriva però a, a un discorso molto più addentro proprio a questo tema dell'esperienza dello spazio e della mutabilità dello spazio in, in, fu, in funzione di questa esperienza e, e questo fa parte anche dei discorsi che stiamo facendo rispetto alle discipline artistiche da questo punto di vista quindi questo tema credo che sicuramente ritornerà anche in forme diverse con gli altri colleghi e, e potrebbe essere un po' la il ragionamento di fondo su cui poi aprire anche le nostre conversazioni future. Eh, grazie quindi a, a Guillermo per il contributo che ci ha dato e speriamo di averlo spesso con noi qui a Venezia e anche in futuro, magari negli wave di cui parlava prima il Rettore. Eh, e niente, l'appuntamento è per il prossimo lunedì, allora sempre qua, speriamo sia un po' meno freddo, eh, con Marusha Zore, che è un, un, una, abbastanza giovane, anche lei architetto, non così giovane come Guillermo, eh, slovena, eh, anche un'amica una, un di, di lunga data, eh, con cui abbiamo avuto delle, delle, delle collaborazioni molto intense e sicuramente sarà un appuntamento molto interessante perché è una persona che, che, che costruisce una grande sensibilità alla condizione dello spazio pur partendo probabilmente da presupposti abbastanza differenti da questi che abbiamo visto oggi ma sarà interessante anche confrontare queste, queste linee di pensiero e poi avremo vi ricordo che la terza la terza delle cinque conferenze si terrà invece in Aula Magna, è quella di Karma Pinos, perché qui sarà eh, l'Aula Tafuri è, è impegnata da un convegno e quindi peraltro avete il calendario in questo fascicolino, chi non l'avesse avuto poi po posso recuperarne le altre copie. Grazie molte. E...